morning. Shalom. Sister Kate here. <clears throat> you guys, I got to give you credit. You have thought through every detail of what's going on. And that's just another part of why um, I have a lot of respect for men. I, I see how the Lord has gifted them and the result of that gifting and what happens when they put their minds to something. You guys are very, very determined. So I've been discussing things with you all because I'm living a life that I think is a good life for anyone. And you all have, you know, brought up all these points about the problems with society and the court system and all that. Got it. Um, and I've been saying that even the Christian church has let you all down because they are not, they don't see the whole picture of what's going on in the Bible. They just don't. They don't have the context. They ignore key pieces. Um, and the, the word even says, the Lord will keep people blind and deaf to the truth, lest they understand. So he doesn't want them all to understand, and there's probably a reason why. It's probably because they're not willing to give up things that he has deemed uh, unlawful. And I'm not even going to go into the details of all that. I mean, you can just imagine. If you're cheating your neighbor, if you're um, committing adultery, if you're doing things against his law, then of course he's not going to bless you. He says that quite clearly in Deuteronomy, I'm pretty sure it's 28, might be 26. Blessings and cursings and what comes from them. Um, and, and I thought I was giving you guys pretty good motivation, you know, pretty good, well, it's not as black as you're painting the picture, and then, wow, the whammy the trump card abortion bam i can't argue with that i cannot put a good spin on that <clears throat> and just so y'all know i am not for abortion and it took me a while because i was brought up by a single mom who was a good mom catholic um still has her faith i i don't find fault with my mom for that it's just not the faith for me um she was kind of liberal. The school I went to was kind of liberal. And so I had a very, you know, women's rights uh, aspect of looking at life until I went through life. And then I realized, no, 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 abortion's awful. It's horrible. And it started with Margaret Sanger, who was a eugenicist. If you don't know what that is, look it up. <clears throat> she hooked up with another eugenicist who was a pastor. Oh, Lord of some church in England and they they together and with their friends decided <coughs> the way to rid the world of the lesser races so they're racist too was to design housing in cities to put them all one on top of each other if you look at poor people housing anywhere in the world poor people housing is huge ugly apartment blocks 20 stories tall the Bible says specifically, thou shalt not live house upon house. You do not stack your houses. That's not the way God intended for people to live. And I also know, because I've researched all this, abortion, the first abortion clinic was made, was started by Margaret Sanger in America to, you know, help women. Well, it was all part of the Genesis plan to kill the lesser races, the lesser people's babies. And it's worked. 60 million aborted babies in America. 60 million human beings murdered in America. It's true. I cannot argue with that. And so I, I have to give you guys a couple of pieces of information on that because I think it's relevant. One, <coughs> who is outside of abortion clinics? Who protests abortion in vast numbers? That's right, believers. Believers in God, because God gives life and he values life and his followers value life. Now that's for the modern Christian church as well as any other church. Almost all of them are anti-abortion. I have personally been 
in some of those walks. I have prayed outside of abortion clinics and you're, you guys are probably saying, well, why didn't you, you know, burn the place down? Because God has more power than I do. I can ask him and then he does things. It looks like Planned Parenthood's gonna be defunded by Trump. That's what somebody was purporting on uh, Twitter. I don't know if it's happened yet, but definitely there are people who are looking to do that. And abortion clinics have shut down. All those horrible facts about them selling baby parts and stuff came to light. And so people kind of started to shy away from that. But you and I agree that that is murder and theft. I get it, 100%. <clears throat> I have, like I said, I have protested abortion clinics. What it's gonna take for that to get reversed is you all, divorced husbands, fighting in court for your rights for your children. And maybe you guys are too burned and you don't want to do it. But if you're going to do that all within the purview of the world, then that's what you have to do. There's a website, I've put it in the comments a couple of times, by a man named Followin Yeshua. F-O-L-L-O-W-N-Y-A-H-S-H-U-A. -S He's got a very interesting uh, testimony about all that. His first wife did all the things you talked about. And he found a second wife who is a faithful woman and they fled the state they were in and they moved to the Ozarks on a piece of 10 acre property they've never even seen as and now as homestead. can be. They have videos about that. They've been on their land a year and the, listen to the husband's testimony about how beautiful it is for him to see his kids out there swinging. Um, <coughs> so I've been trying to say this whole time the way to live your life so that it looks the way you want it is hand in hand with God who's the creator. And I've given you guys verses that back me up. And now I'm giving you that God is the only one and his people are the only ones who are anti-abortion. And they get just as much flack for it. Um, so I don't see, okay, so if you withdraw, got it? You're going to live on your little property out in the middle of somewhere. You are just like us. And the Bible says there will be a remnant. There's always a faithful remnant left out of any disaster. Um, and you guys are already kind of standing for God because you want your responsibility back. You want to be the head of your family, which is where he wants you. You want your wife to be your partner, not fighting with you like a beta male. God agrees with all of that. And his way of living is hand in hand with that. The modern Christian churches aren't teaching it. The, 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 if you know that game called telephone where people talk to each other, you know, whisper or something, and the person who starts it sends it down a line of people, and by the end it's nothing like what it began, that's kind of what happened in the churches. It's 2,000 years later, and everyone who reads the Bible now looks at it in the context of a modern American or British or Canadian or German person and misses all the context of what's really going on there, of the story of the Israelite people and their interactions with God. And you got to look at Romans 11 because if you believe in Yahweh and you are willing to follow his statutes and commandments, you are Israel. There's a great video by a man named James Staley called uh, Identity Crisis, and that's what it's talking about. The other thing is, 2 Colossians 14, everyone quotes that, all oh, the law's been done away with. Well, context, guys, it's all about context. Colossians 2, the entire chapter, says nothing about God's law in it. In chap the verses 1 through 4, it talks about he doesn't want you to be led away by vain speech and um, verses four to eight talk about the traditions of men, which God also talks about, Jesus talks about in Mark seven, one through 13. What is nailed to the cross in verse 14 has already been introduced in the verses before it, the traditions of men, vain speech, that equates to the Talmud, which is what Jesus was fighting against when he came back, why he's, uh, having arguments with the Pharisees and Sadducees all throughout his time there and why in Matthew 23 he slams them because they have replaced his father's way with their way and it's the same thing that the modern church is doing the religion that says you've got to you know 
uh, handle snakes or what you know baptism you do need but that you can't play cards or you can't dance is is ridiculous and that's been perpetrated by men not men of God men who want the power that a church gives them or the money or the influence Joel Olstein one of y'all mentioned Joel Olstein and my husband in the same breath two separate pastors one of them's flying his own personal jet one of them's living off grid like this so we can be friends and I hope I hope I hope while you're out there being introspective on your you know in your house or wherever you guys have gone to you will at least look at the Bible read it for yourselves without thinking about the way the modern Christian church looks at it and think about the plan that God sets up and how his people will live if they are just willing to obey. Does that sound familiar? Willing so I to thought obey. I was finished with that topic, but I completely forgot inheritance. Do you know that one of the most important things to Israelites is their children? Uh, they are your inheritance. I mean, they are who carry on your household name, who carry on your faith. They belong to you and the, the teaching of them in the Bible is not just the mom's responsibility. It is the father's responsibility to pass on his belief system, to leave his property and his goods, uh, his chattel to his sons or daughters if there are no sons. So yes, you guys are being robbed and it's not good if you have connection with your sons and daughters try to stay as strong for them as you can try to inculcate them with a belief system that's separate from what society is teaching them and again I want you to give them the godly uh, background I want you to give them the godly perspective because I think that's the right one from the Bible but even if you don't maybe you'll inspire them to be the lawyers, the judges, that start turning society around as you want, that start changing laws. And here's another thing, I've done a video on it. I am I told the people who listen to me to get involved in local politics so that off-grid green life uh, can be more sustained, that all those laws that forbid, you know, having your own house on your own property and making it the way you want it, um, can be changed from the ground floor up. Well, then I'm going to suggest the same thing to you all. If you want to see change in that court system, you got to get in there and start changing it. Get involved in your local politics and start being a decision maker who can make those changes. Um, again, I wish you would do it for God because I think he is the one who can restore all things. Um, but if not, at least with like even getting custody of your own children. Thank you. All right, bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching the vids. I do, really do wish you guys the best and um, continue to feel free to come on there and talk about your stories. I think it's part of being able to heal um, and, and they aren't interesting. And uh, I do appreciate all the input you've had and how gentlemanly most of you have been. Shalom.